Oh. So I took a piece of two by four and wedged it underneath, grabbed the, grabbed the uh, umbrella pole and just came down with my body weight and she clicked into place. So this ensures that the tent won't collapse. Keeps everything nice and tight. Oh, there we go. There, and now she's pulled. And here is the stove. This thing is stainless steel. But it is awesome. You'll notice right here that I can't go all the way down into the stove. There's something blocking me and that is on purpose. It's a, a baffle. So the, the smoke will go all the way to the back and the baffle has an opening in the back of the stove and the smoke and the heat will curl around the back and then it'll come on top here and suck out if that makes any sense. So essentially there's like, it's almost like there's two tops to the stove. The first top has an opening in the back of the stove that allows for the smoke and the heat to curl around and then come out. And that essentially allows for a beautiful draft. It allows for the stove to have very even heat on top, all over the top for cooking. And it acts like a spark arrestor. Bring everything to the front. Let that wind just suck at it. There's a great little net here to hang your wet stuff. So it'll dry off and it's not gonna take long in this. Pull this off, the whole entire cover, and you're getting the most amount of air being sucked through there. And that is giving off a tremendous amount of heat. That bed of coals is beautiful. So you close that, and then there's certain levels, right? So you have, all right, I'm letting a bit of air in. I'm letting more air in. And I'm letting even more. And then you take it all the way off, and you get a really nice draft going through. Lots of butter. Get the butter going in there. Throw those hot dogs in with all of that butter. Just like that, super greasy. Yes. Get it all in there. Oh, look at that already. And the cheese isn't even in there. Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. Cheese. I wonder if mice like cheese. Is that a thing? Oh, it's going to be so chunky. That cheese is going to be amazing. I've got some nice snow building up around, around the sides. And that's good for keeping the tent nice and secure and more insulated.
just like that. I gotta be honest with you guys, <laughs> the fire went out. I uh, I just didn't do it right. So, I grabbed an extra flame, one of those little store-bought blocks that you can just light. They're just like an all-natural fire starter. So I grabbed one and I took a match and I, just, I started the fire. It is cold. Listen to that sleeping bag. I need to make sure this place is properly ventilated. The best place to measure the temperature right now is at the top. So you guys can see how hot the top of this tent gets. Cause it gets, it gets so warm in here. At minus 35, 38, 40 outside, it doesn't matter. It's over 30 degrees in here, almost uh, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's climbing. Like you can watch that climb. Oh, baby! Yes. Oh man. like that it's up wow everything feels different in minus 30 minus 40 yeah <laughs> wow I'm happy with that yeah this is this is slightly different from mine there's a few different features on it I don't have the reflectives you don't eh? no wow that's nice there you go 
Yeah, and it's pretty bright in here for... Uh, it is quite bright. Yeah, because I know in the wintertime, a lot of people were saying, oh, your tent's too dark. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, they were pretty keen when they uh, put the double wall in, of course, to make this uh, To white make it white, yeah. Top, it's amazing out here. Dave's Island. We, we came in that boat. And so for those of you that watch up north of 60, Dave's camp is in there, normally in the winter time, but we decided to camp here. So we're on the south side of the island here now. It's a beautiful exposure over here in the summertime. Nice little sandy beach. It's really easy to dock the boat. And a lot of, a lot of dry wood around here, a lot of dead wood. Yeah. We're gonna have a nice bonfire tonight. It's an old fire pit here. I think I just need a few of these. Should be good. So out in Nunavut, they would tie rocks to the, they have rocks surrounding their tent, and then they would tie it down from up high, from the roof, from the eave, and then they would have just one ridge pole and two poles on the end. It's, it's hard to describe, but it's, it's like there's two poles here, one ridge pole, and then everything is just tied down tight with rocks, and it works really well. Their tents stay up for a long period of time. So while I'm not in that situation, I am relying on rocks to make sure that my tent doesn't fly away. The thing I like about this cot setup so you can see there's a hole here and a hole here, right? But right here there's a space and right here there isn't a space. And that space is for you to get a nice good grip and pull tight. Because if there's no space, it's really hard to get this on. So what I'm gonna do, slide it through this opening here on the actual cot material. There we go. You see? Grip onto it. Now, this side, pretty easy, right? That's very easy. When I do it on the other side, you'll see the real reason why you need this, because you're, you're pulling this material really, really tight. Nice and easy. And this is when it gets a little bit tighter, right? So I'm now in the hole, and I have, I'm able to just grip this. Bang. See how easy that was? What do you got? Uh, some dry grass, a little birch. Yep. This stuff is so dry. Look at this. Wow. If you want to make a bird's nest for a bow and drill fire, this is the perfect material here for it. Have you ever made one? I have, yeah. Success? Yeah, I've actually been pretty successful. Not all the time, of course, but yep. I've had a few good does. Something I definitely need to learn. How are you gonna light it? Uh, just gonna use, well I have a couple of different methods, but I always like to use the fire steel. Yeah. It's always fun to use. For sure. How many strikes? Mm, I'm gonna guess under, under four. Oh, mm. <laughs> that was right at four. Oh, it wants to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Right up you floor. Got it. And I wasn't sparking hard either, right? You could barely hear it. Yeah. There we go. This stuff is so dry. I think we have a fire jet. Yeah, I think she's gonna stay lit.
don't know the name of this lake. Or all I know is I'm in bear country. This tent, you can get a padded floor that goes with it. And you'll see here, the legs just pop right in. And it's kind of like they just kind of stick in there. So this is bear scat right here, but it's dried up and old. Like it's really old. Maybe earlier this summer. Lots of little bugs in there that are going to town on it. But you can see right by my tent. They are circling me like mad. They're leaving me alone for the most part, but they're just all around me. Look, we back home we call them stouts. I don't, I don't know why we call them stouts, but that's what we call them. And uh, they're like horse flies or whatever. They're pretty big, right? They're like the size of a bee. And um, they will take a chunk out of you if they land on you and they want to bite. For the most part, they leave me alone. Um, and I find when I do go to a place, they normally just like take off after a while. But today they are just relentless. They are not backing down. I've been here for a couple of hours. I'm just kind of sitting back now, trying to enjoy myself. But these flies mean business. So I've never been here before and I was driving down the highway and just like looking for somewhere I could pull off and there was this dirt road and this is where it ends. It's really weird. It's like there's a road that was built to come to nothing. I will sleep better with that electric bear fence around me because I don't have a rifle. I do have bear spray. I have the bear spray on me and uh, that does give me peace of mind. But. Bear fence is probably the way to do it. I wish my brother was here right now. He could read the instructions for me and I could just set it up. It would be great. Got this great little pouch here. It's just, it can hold anything I want. It's really nice. I can have water in here. So good. I got this camping pillow too. It's pretty neat because it's got straps I can strap in around I think that's what it does I mean I'm not I don't need it to and it's pretty cool it's like every idea in the book these guys think of it look at that yes
Okay, it's on. So this right here is bison poop, dung, it's pretty dry. I mean, maybe there's a bit of moisture in there. I'd say it's been a while since the bison has been here, but there are a ton of bison um, around this area, like a ton. You see them on the highway all the time and uh, in the woods. So this paddy here is, I would say it's pretty old. Maybe this season, I, I would say, yep, yeah, pretty much. Safe to say this is probably like, I don't know, a few weeks old at minimum. But it would be pretty neat to see a bison. I would love to see one come in here. Um, they are pretty massive. That's for sure. They're the biggest land animal in North America. There's more here too. This one might be from just like a little guy. Bison like to travel in, in uh, herds. That might be just a, like a little bison's uh waste So I'm a big Husqvarna guy right now. I love Husqvarna tools. And these axes are really nice. I know they make axes with wooden handles, but I really like these composite handles. They're excellent in the deep cold. These axes are strong. The back you can use as a hammer. Um, and it actually says, use this as a hammer. And most axes don't do that, in fact, uh, like a Fisker, which I think is a decent axe, it's a good axe, it will say your warranty's ruined if you use the back, whereas Husqvarna kind of recommends it with these, these axes. So there's, a, there's another one that's a bit bigger that I'm going to get as well, and I'll have the trifecta, and I think this will be my, these will be my axes. I know there's some really nice wooden handled axes out there, some Swedish axes that are just beautiful and nice, but for me, and what I do, these are excellent. So yeah, I, uh, I'm going to use this hatchet now for the first time. I've got some little uh, pallet wood here. Oh yeah. And I just want some, oh my God, that is ridiculous. This is so good. Like, I'm not putting anything into this. Wow. Yeah, this one's a bit thicker. Oh yeah. Oh. So good. Highly recommend, and and they're affordable.
I think that's the sound of a spruce beetle or spruce beetles. Wanna see? It stopped. They're gross bugs and they will bite. It went silent for sure. So I've got this uh, bucket here and I'm going to use it for peeing tonight. I, I feel a lot better just getting up and going in the bucket and then I can just dump it out in the morning um, than getting out of the tent. And a big reason is I'm going to bring in mosquitoes. If I get out of this tent in the middle of the night, I'm bringing in mosquitoes 100%. The other thing is I don't want to go out there <laughs> unless I have to. Right here is the stove jack. And so I'm gonna open it now because it's nice and low. Instead of opening it when the tent is popped up, it's easier to do it this way. So it is nice in here. Look how bright it is. Beautiful. And it's bigger than I thought. Okay, this should be enough wood for the night. The thing is, is it's so old and so dead that it's gonna burn hot and fast. Oh man, you guys wait till you see this. It is really beautiful what they've done. Just wing nuts. And I love that because you don't have to mess around. You just loosen things and they pop off. And look at this. Look at that. Can you guys see that? It's got a beautiful design with some trees and a bear and mountains. That is gorgeous. And that is just going to look so nice tonight when the fire is glowing. The sleeping bag has been to hell and back with me. The best money I ever spent. It's good for like minus 30 or 40. Just amazing. It's definitely the smallest tent I've ever been in. And I know it might look pretty big, but I've got a foot length to the stove. I'm touching the stove here with my, with my foot. So I'm close. All right. Yeah. Look at that. Check it out. <laughs> oh, that, that is deadly. That is amazing. Wow. Now, if it was really windy, I would not be doing this. This is 
different for me. A few more. She's doing good now. Let's see how it goes here. Ooh, that's hot. This is Northern Lights in real time. Often, I will do time lapses because the time lapse really brings them out because you're taking all these little pictures, right? And you just stitch the pictures together. And wow, look at them though. Holy. They are going. If there was no moon tonight, Holy smokes, these things would be popping. And just like that, the leg is on. Putting in the work to get perfect splits and kindling to start the fire is always worth it. If not, you could find yourself struggling to start your fire, having to start it over again, which I've done, I've encountered it. I've tried to, to take shortcuts, hoping that my fire would start with bigger pieces of wood, and I failed. And so the smaller, the better with your kindling just to get the fire going. And of course, the drier, the better. Oh, it wants to. There we go.
That good? Yeah, it's good. Sorry. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm -mm. What do you think of the tent? I like it. I like that you can kind of go wherever. You're not stuck to the one place. There's a little vent here. Allows oxygen to get to the stove. I'll have to open it on the other side too, but air will rush in through here tonight, feed the stove and keep this place nice and ventilated. It's getting cold. You can really see my breath starting to come now. It's gonna drop hard here in a bit. But I can already feel heat coming out of this tent and I've got it wide open as I'm working. Got this lamp here that doubles as a fan. I'll, uh, that's gonna be a really nice light later tonight. And so what happens is the fan blows the heat that's rising back down into the tent. It's a really smart idea. And I'm just gonna hook it right here like that. And then I'll bring this over, hook it back in again and I'm good to go. Like this is a sweet, sweet spot. And it's really, really, really comfortable. I would actually say it's a bit too warm. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna push this down here. And just close it a bit. And I think that will set a beautiful temperature in here for the evening.
So the amount of heat that's released into the tent because of these glass walls is incredible. Like it's it's excessive <laughs> almost. It's it's a lot of heat. If this was all stainless steel, the stove would be nice and hot, but not as hot as it is with the glass sides. It's a really really cool feature. It makes for a beautiful glow in the tent and I just love it. I love using these stoves because they're so unique. Minus 20 Celsius, about minus 5 Fahrenheit.